broadcasting from various countries around the world using voice over IP technology. This is VoIP Uncovered, a VoIP on Solutions UK podcast. I'm Kathleen Reed. Joining us today are David Rowe from the Free Telephony Project and Elektra Ashiel from Freifunknet, Wireless Community Network in Germany. Elektra and David came together about eight months ago to work on the Village Telco project, a project to give low-cost Wi-Fi-based telephony to people in the developing world. They've been working as a team to develop one component of the project called the Mesh Potato. The Mesh Potato is a Wi-Fi router with telephony that does mesh networking. Elektra is the project's mesh networking guru, and David is a telephony hardware person. And actually, Elektra is using the Mesh Potato to speak to us now. Thanks for joining us today, David and Elektra. Voipon has a great admiration and respect for open source projects. What's particularly interesting about the Free Telephony Project is that it's not only based on open source software, but the hardware is also entirely open, making the entire solution free, as in speech. What made you start this project, and what would you say was the most challenging part of it? Well, I started the project back in 2005. Uh, The main reason was, just like a lot of projects, I had a niche I wanted to scratch. Uh, I was fascinated by the idea of building an embedded asterisk device, um, a telephony product that didn't need uh, a computer to make it run, that would run standalone like an appliance. And it had been an idea that had been kicking around my head for a few years and uh, I came across a chip, uh, the analogue devices Blackfin, that was just perfect for the job. And I couldn't help myself. Uh, I started working on the things evenings and nights and uh, eventually it's turned into a full-time occupation. Um, the idea of open hardware was, uh, well, I, I guess I started doing it as a closed hardware open software project, but I, I just felt like doing something a little bit different. And um, the idea of open hardware got put into my head. Um, through the, the Blackfin community, uh, the CPU I'm using, who had released some open hardware designs, and I thought, well, let's try and do the whole PBX system open hardware and see where it leads. Um, I really like experimenting and playing with new ideas, and uh, that's just made it uh, so much more fun and, and, and rewarding, making it open hardware. In terms of challenging, um, to be honest, looking back, it's been nothing but fun. Uh, <laughs> the hardware, There's been some hardware and software and uh, people-wear issues, I guess, like any project, but... Um, the only thing I'd say I haven't done that I've found really challenging is that I really have a desire to use this technology to help people in the developing world. And um, with the free telephony project hardware, the IPO4, the IPO1, etc., while they've been a big hit in the first world, um, I haven't been able to use them to help thousands and thousands of people in the developing world. And that's uh, a desire I still wish to fulfil, which is why I'm working on the, the Village Telco project, in particular the Mesh Potato. Thanks, David. Can you tell us anything more about the free telephony project? What new hardware might we expect to see in the coming months? Uh, my main activities over the last 18 months have been in developing the mesh potato, and over the next few months, we're going to take that from beta into a, a full production unit, um, something that can run uh, outdoors. Uh, it's been ro- made robust against environmental uh, and uh, human damage type conditions. Um, so that'll be the next big release. Um, that, of course, is a project I'm collaborating with uh, with other people. It's being funded by the Shuttleworth Foundation, and we're working with a company called Atcom for the hardware manufacture. In terms of the, the VoIP hardware coming out of the Free Telephony project, that's really taken on a life of its own, and I don't have a lot of uh, a lot to do with developing VoIP products uh, on a day-to-day basis. Um, but to be honest, I think that's how it should be. Um, I kicked off the project. I've, we've injected these free designs into the... Uh, into the open source community, and now people are running with them. And uh, there must be 20 or 25 derivative designs that have been released now from the, for the small start we made four or five years ago. And uh, that's very satisfying for me. Um, my, my current interests with the Free Telephony Project are addressing ease of use issues. Um, we've developed a great little hardware platform. It's very low cost, but it's still just as hard to use as a full-size Asterix box. And uh, unless you've got Asterix and mining skills, they can be quite difficult to set up. So uh, I'm playing with this meme of... Uh, Ease of use. Uh, can we make an asterisk box as easy to set up as, say, a Wi-Fi router? Uh, and so it's sort of software that I'm playing with at the moment, and in particular, the ease of use idea. That's fantastic. So if creating an entirely open-based PBX was not enough, we and a number of VoIPON customers are very impressed with the OSLEC Open Source High Performance Line Echo Canceler you've put together. What made you start this project, and what were the main difficulties you experienced when developing OSLEC? Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with the way OSLEC has turned out. Um, the reason I started it was that I needed an echo canceller that would work with the IP04. That's the open hardware IP PPX that I played a part in developing. Um, Asterix, for many, many years, had a big problem with software echo cancellation. There was no adequate echo cancellation. It would work sometimes, wouldn't work other times. And to be fair, echo cancellers are quite difficult to develop. You need some fairly specialised skills. So I decided um, to try an open source approach to developing an echo canceller. Um, as background, uh, I, I have um, an education in digital signal processing, or DSP, so I understood the basics of echo cancellation. Um, I myself had tried to build one several times over the past 15 years and had failed. 
So I realized what a challenge it would be. So I tried something different. Um, I set up a way so that a prototype echo canceller could be tested in live asterisk boxes and that I could sample all the signals flowing to and from the echo canceller and then get those samples emailed back to me in the form of WAV files. Now what this let me do was access many, many um, alpha and beta testers, then take the uh, results of their tests and feed them back into my uh, development system here. So it was just like I had the ability to, to fly to Canada and make a phone call on a Canadian phone line, um, find out something that failed, and take it back here and test it. This is a real open source uh, process that never could have happened in a closed source organization. The results were um, predictably very fast development and very high quality code and it's currently in use by um, tens if not hundreds of thousands of people around the world um, with uh, very few problems with those, who, with those that are using it. David, what a fantastic effort. Thanks for sharing that story with us. Now let's move on to Electra. Can you tell us a little more about the Mesh Potato Project? What it is and who should be using it, as well as how viable is it? Well, the background is uh, I actually met uh, David in 2008 at a workshop in Cape Town organized by the Shuttleworth Foundation, where I also met uh, Steve Stong, who is uh, directing that project. The idea was uh, telephony for a developing world, and uh, together with Wi-Fi, so we don't have a fixed infrastructure, and a quick way to roll out the infrastructure is to use wireless technology and particularly mesh technology. Um, I guess you're probably not familiar with the term. Okay, uh, mesh, mesh technology is the Wi-Fi devices, some of them, they can operate in multi-point to multi-point peer-to-peer mode, so they can form a mesh in that way that every node, every device acts as a relay station for all the others in order to extend the range and the coverage of the network. And the mesh potato is a wireless ATA. It's the first wireless ATA on the market that can do mesh networking. So it's intended to be placed on roofs in the developing world, and it will organize a self-organizing wireless network and uh, give good coverage and by repeating the signal from, from station to station if necessary. And it features asterisk as well. David, you can also jump in if you would like to make some additions. Uh, you're doing a fine job, Elytra. Okay, great. Um, so how do you guys see the market developing for these projects? Uh, perhaps if I'll go first, Elytra. Um, the primary aim of the Village Telco and the Mesh Potato is to, is to help people uh, get low-cost telephony in the developing world. So we're looking at entering very high volume manufacturer uh, over the next six, uh, six to 24 months. The, there's also some possibilities for um, the product in the first world. Um, what we've got with the Mesh Potato and the Village Telco system is a way to roll out telephone networks based on Wi-Fi very, very quickly. Um, you can switch on a Mesh Potato, tell it what its phone number is and be making phone calls within a minute. Um, so imagine a disaster situation like Haiti. You can deploy a thousand of these set them up with a small battery and solar panel and have instant telephony and IP connectivity across a disaster area. So we see a, quite a strong first world market as well. Um, plus there are a lot of people who are really uh, interested in the community telephony aspect of the Village Telco and Mesh Potato. Uh, the idea that you don't need to rely on a phone company or even um, an ISP for your internet connectivity. Um, I have people in my neighbourhood who'd like to use this to get around the existing phone companies if they could. So uh, quite a few different markets in both the first and third world for the uh, Village Telco and Mesh Potato. So, Electra, is there anything you'd like to add? I think we try to do something like the OLPC project did for education of kids. Mesh Potato is a device which could help people to deploy and build wireless infrastructure everywhere on the planet and particularly in areas with rough environment. We have spent a considerable amount of effort to make it as robust as possible. Great. Well, thanks to you both for your time. David Rowe is from the Free Telephony Project, and Electra Ashiel is from Freifunknet Wireless Network Community in Germany. This has been a VoIP on VoIP Uncovered podcast brought to you by VoIP on Solutions. For more information, please visit www.voiponn.co.uk.